Hey everybody, Kneecap here. This is going to be a holy healing guide for Karzan. It is only going to be the bosses because having all the trash in there was just way too long. I may do something different to where I just do a single boss with the trash before it because some of the trash is hard, especially if you're learning. So we're just going to start right here at Opera. It's going to be a different event every week potentially. Uh, this week is like Westfall story. So, you know, it's all kind of like a pun on other um, famous shows and whatnot. So as you start out here, you're going to want to spread out, first of all. There's a little bit of lag here to start as I was starting to stream here, but um, it'll even out. So you're going to want to stay spread out from your group. As you can see, uh, Tank's taking quite a bit of damage right at the start. Uh, it's not too bad to heal through, though. And now there's going to be these fire tornadoes everywhere. And I just kind of bubble right here. I didn't know what to expect. But you don't have to waste your bubble there. You can just run out of it. Um, you're going to be moving... A decent amount this fight it's not too bad but just run out of the fire tornadoes uh, you'll also see me standing near a wall I did that because the tornadoes didn't seem to come over there ever so um, but I don't advise that you're gonna want to stand somewhere kind of in the middle of the room as much as you can uh, okay so down this part <laughs> here comes some more ads this is just like constant like new ads coming out here and uh, so now you're fighting like the murlocs and whatnot so this is the part where you need to be spread out for. So you, you don't want two people to get hit by that. So you kind of just spread out. It's not too bad as long as you're not getting hit by tornadoes. Then these little wave things come through. As you can see, they don't by any means one-shot you. I, I got hit by that one. I, I stand by this wall where it's kind of safe. <laughs> and if you want to, you can use this strategy. And then you can avoid the wave coming this way. And if you want to, I mean, you can, you'll see the waves come from basically the same spot every time. So... Um, as it says, wash away, dodge attack. I tried to get out of the way for that one. Not sure if I got hit or not. It kind of looks like I did. But um, so you're just dodging waves, dodging fire tornadoes, spreading out, and healing through the damage. As long as your DPS isn't taking constant damage from other abilities, it's really not that bad. Um, overall, I found it easier than the Wicked fight because. Mostly because my group didn't wipe it all in this fight. So um, there's no like one shot mechanic, I guess you'd say. The tank does need to get out of a uh, knockback stun type of thing from Tony. But uh, other than that, um, nothing too big to worry about. You can see a lot of running around right there. And it, that's, that, I mean, that's pretty much the whole fight. Um, you're just healing. As you can see, I really didn't even use any cooldowns. That's how easy it was. Um, I didn't I didn't need to do anything, really. If I would have stayed in the middle and I could have, like, standing right there where I am, I would choose that wall. Um, so we'll move on to Maiden. Maiden's a really uh, easy to explain fight. Basically, you're going to be fighting the Maiden, and she's going to be wholly shocking. That needs to be interrupted. And then she will put this little debuff on you, as you just saw on me. And that's going to put Holy Ground, uh, or Shake It Ground down. And you'll see it grow behind me, so that's why I kind of dropped it over at the wall there. Because she's going to be doing this quite often, and it's going to eventually kind of fill up the room. So you want to drop it pretty far away. So it's on me again. So I'm going to go... During this phase, as you can see, there's not a ton of damage being taken. Basically, you just don't want to stand in that Holy Ground. It's going to put a debuff on you and it ticks really hard. The longer you stand in it, the more uh, stacks you get. And if you have probably like three stacks, you're probably going to die. So she's going to cast Mass Repentance. So that at this point, you want to get one stack of the debuff. But instead of doing that, I actually uh, Blessing and Sacrifice the tank, which is the old strategy from Old Kara. And then I didn't have to worry about taking any stacks of the debuff. And I was able to just heal up the rest of the group. So now I'm going to get another... Uh, sacred ground thing on me. I didn't quite get that one far enough out, but that's okay. I, I let my tank know I wasn't uh, voice chat with him. So, uh, let the tank know, hey, that's going to come a little bit closer than normal. And, you know, you just keep on healing up, and it's just the same thing. Rinse and repeat. Hopefully, you don't have to go through too many repentances to get it down, but uh, if it, you will see here, uh, I believe one of our DPS gets three stacks of the debuff. That is, I actually think I might get one too many there. No, um, three stacks of the debuff, and they're going to go down. There's right there. 
there's nothing you can do about it really. Um, three stacks is 600,000 um, a second. So you're trying to heal 600,000 a second while healing other people. Uh, yes, if you just pop a cooldown and only heal them, you could probably keep them up, but you can't just only tunnel heal one person, really. So I had to let him die. Everyone else kind of only got one stack, and we're just going to keep going until this maiden's finally dead here. Luckily he died because we were about to drop a holy ground in there. Alright, so next we have Morose. You're going to collect traps from uh, around the raid in the room that he's in, in the room before, and you're going to trap uh, three of the four guards with them. Now each three of the four have a different ability they can do. Um, you can see uh, the axe spinning right there. Obviously don't stand in that. And I believe the warrior also uh, makes the tank take more damage. Then of course there's a healer. There's a mage who drains mana, which you'll see is very important. And I'm honestly not even sure what the other one does. Uh, it's negligible. The big ones you have to worry about is the healer the mana drain, and the uh, one that makes your tank tank, uh, your tank take a lot more damage. So you're going to have to decide your kill order on the mobs. Your tank will probably decide, or you can decide as a group. So he decides to pull the uh, caster, and he actually interrupts it first. So as you can see, I'm, I'm doing pretty fine on mana right now. And a note on this fight is you'll, you'll have to be healing a lot because there's going to be groats which is a bleed put on random members, and it's eventually probably going to end up stacking up even higher. So you just have to heal through that, and there is a coat check debuff to take off of the tank as well, so you're going to want to dispel that. So you can see that I believe four of us have gross right now, so I'm having to heal everyone. If your group does this fast enough, uh, you can just kind of flash a light spam the whole time. However, you can see that I'm completely out of mana now. That's because they did not interrupt the mana drain. So now I have to do the rest of this fight without mana, which is not fun whatsoever. Um, Ice Block does not remove Guru. I don't think your bubble removes Guru. Uh, you just don't take the damage while you're in immunity, I believe. And then as soon as you're out, you take the damage again. I believe that's how it works. So now I'm trying to somehow maintain my mana. So we have uh, our first person go down there because of having two groats on them. Boss is almost dead. All the adds are gone. And I'm just going to have to heal through it. This is a good, a, a, this is a pretty good demonstration of what to do when uh, you don't have uh, someone interrupting that, uh, the mage that does the manager in there. You see I have to enter, heal the tank. Uh, a good note is Bop also it is physical damage, so Bop also allowed me to not uh, take any damage from Guru, even though it doesn't remove it from me. And that helped me there for a while, kind of. I only had three people to heal then. So I'm just basically using Holy Light the rest of this fight. Moros is almost dead, though, so we do get it down. Not not good. Um, finally, uh, next we're going to have a Tumen here. And we actually do an accidental pull here. So a two-man is quite easy, we found out, if you have high DPS. So we accidentally pull a two-man. And hopefully you get to see all the different uh, abilities here. So you're going to have to cleanse this ability. This is the biggest job for you as a healer. You have to cleanse this ability. And if you pick the wrong person, you're probably going to wipe your group. And if you don't pick it fast enough, you're probably going to wipe the group. The way you can tell this ability is there will literally be like a ghost type thing on one of your uh, party members' backs. If you're in go if you're in chat or something, obviously they can call out to you, hey, it's on my back. If not, you just literally have to look visually. It's not everyone's going to have the debuff, and you have to choose the correct one. So you have to choose the one with the ghost on their back. So you're going to be running out of these cone attacks here. They don't one-shot, but they do hurt really bad, as you can see. Um... I, I chose to bubble there, didn't really need to. Um, now, here's a, a weird ability. Kind of these horses that uh, charge back and forth, ghost horses. And it's similar to like the last boss in Vault of Wardens, uh, Cordana, with the line that walks through and you have to find the hole in the line. It's very similar to that. So you're going to try to be avoiding these horses. And luckily we get him down really fast, so we don't ever actually have to deal with that once. If you don't have super high DPS, you'll have to deal with these phases kind of twice, probably. 
And then when you go back to midnight, it'll be a lot easier. Um, only had one debuff, only had one round of horses. Pre be prepared to have to do those things twice would be my advice. Um, again, choose the correct person to dispel. You need to find, I call it a ghost, I, I, I don't know what it is, dispel the ghost off their back. And next we're going to have Curator. Um, this fight's pretty easy as long as DPS do their job. You're just going to basically, as a healer, uh, not stand in things and then uh, kind of just move with your group. Obviously, uh, an ideal thing would have all the range kind of stacked together, but um, it doesn't work out that way. So, And we also, uh, also uh, just a keynote for the fight in general, make sure you're using heroism during evocation. You'll see evocation in a little bit here. You don't want to use heroism at the start like we did. As you see, the mages had to leave their little runes on the ground, and we actually have three mages. So we could have probably easily uh, got him down during evocation, but uh, we blew here way too early there. And you see these little swirlies on the ground, and they're just going to put this static stuff on the ground, and you just run out of it. There's going to be little ads. Um, that's the DPS's job. They should be killing the ads. And the tank's just going to slowly kite the boss. When he runs out of mana, he's going to evocate. And then that's your chance to just go all out on DPS. Um, not, not a ton of damage taken. The only time there's a ton of damage taken is if there's too many adds up or if people are standing in the static. Other than that, it's it's really, really easy. So now he's evocating. At this point, you can throw DPS if you want. I, I didn't personally this time because I honestly thought the mages would just kill it. Um, but uh, at this point, you there's nothing else for you to do. So if you can not stand in the stuff and get in there, just go ahead and start throwing damage. Um, as long as you, if your group seems to be doing the mechanics correctly, I would go ahead and pop my wings and uh, do damage that way as well. See, I had to use my lay on hands there. I have to, but I chose to. And uh, if you do get into an, a second phase, so you don't kill them during your invocation, it's just the same thing over and over again. That it's just uh, a race before you run out of room on the ground to stand in. That's all. See more swirlies, and it's just very repetitive fight. You see, uh, here's a good example. My tank kind of gets stuck in there because he has this little patch of ground, and he's trying to save room, which is smart. But he kind of gets stuck in here, and at some point here, he's going to take quite a bit of damage. And I actually kind of get stuck in with him, so uh, I guess this would have been the only like, really sketchy part of the fight, and it wasn't really that bad either. You just got to make sure you're not. Uh, standing but that is you can literally get that close and not be in it i mean i wasn't in it right there but i just chose to bubble and then i'm going to run out of it as well because we are starting to run out of room here pop my wings for this final bit get everybody up everyone was kind of being a little laissez-faire with the discharge on the ground there And then there goes Curator. Um, next we have Med uh, Shade of Medive here. Uh, I thought this one was somewhat hard as a healer, at least as a Holy Paladin. So your tank's going to take uh, quite a bit of damage from this missile attack. You just have to heal through that. You'll see a little debuff of like a Pyroblast that's just a spread out mechanic. The tank has it right now, so you just don't stack in that. Otherwise, you, don't, you can't dispel that uh, or anything. And then there's going to be other things. All these spells are interruptible, by the way. So you can have some sort of interrupt rotation as well. That would make it uh, pretty easy. So you see, I'm just going to stand away. Now here comes Ceaseless Winter. This is going to be rough as a Holy Paladin. So basically you have to keep moving the whole time or else you take frost damage. And it ramps up pretty bad. So I went ahead and bubbled to start. Just I, I was kind of fearful that my group was going to take a lot of damage. So then... Uh, I popped my Aura Mastery. I should have saved that in hindsight. I don't recommend popping your Aura Mastery right there. And as you can see, your bubble can basically last about half the Ceaseless Winter-ish. And other than that, as long as everyone's kind of moving, it's not too bad. There's another, just another Pyroblast there. And soon we're going to get Flame Wreath. There they are. So during Flame Wreath, I found this a little bit more difficult than what I thought. The people in the Flame Wreath are actually taking quite a bit of damage even though they aren't moving. And that's the key. You don't want to try to move through the flame wreath. I imagine that will kill you. 
as you can see, they're taking quite a bit of damage right now. So uh, maybe that's a good time to use Wings or Tears Deliverance or Holy Avenger. Uh, I didn't in this case. And honestly, if you can save all your cooldowns, I would because the next part's actually harder. And here comes three adds. This is going to be a lot of group damage. I popped my wings a little too early. I should have waited until everyone was a little bit more hurt. But uh, these things are just going to be doing this arcane damage to basically everyone in the room. And there's three of them, so um, it does get easier as each one goes down. As you can see, I'm keeping everyone up pretty easy. That's because I have my wings popped. Other than that, it would have been a lot more difficult. I still had to use quite a bit of mana to keep everybody up. Um, after the second one goes down, only one of them's not that bad to heal through. It's really only the three that are really, really bad to heal through. One's not too bad. Then the last part is just easy. It's just like the first part again. So you're just going to have the Pyroblast debuff, and you can interrupt the spells. And then that's about it for the Shade of Medivh. All right, next we're going to have a Man Devour. We didn't really do this fight correctly. Uh, this is my first time doing it personally. Um, so you're basically just going to be fighting this big Mana Worm. Uh, it's easy to kind of get too spread out there. You're going to run out of that like Arcane Bomb there. That's what that looks like. It's easy to get too spread out because you're so small and you're in this big room. Uh, but uh, try to stay somewhat close to your range DPS. As you can see, there's a little Vortex thing there that's important for later on. Don't uh, stand in the arcane bomb again. And pretty soon he's going to like shoot these orbs out. And it's just like the man devours that you fight in there. And uh, so you, if you collect these orbs right there, and I tried to get more. I, I wasn't very good at this. I didn't really know what I was doing. I tried to get more. I missed. Then you can like deposit them off into that uh, shadow stuff on the ground there. That's generally how the mechanic works. I can't say that I'm doing it perfectly or doing it correctly. Uh, we didn't do a very good job at it, but it, it was healable anyways. It was getting to the point at the end where I couldn't heal through it anymore, but um, it wasn't too awful bad. And every time there's going to be more and more of these uh, balls coming in. As you can see, I, I'm struggling somewhat to get them. <laughs> Um, you could probably try some sort of like kiting strategy to get the balls to all kind of jumble together maybe. Uh, that's up to you. You don't need to get every ball, you just need to get some of them. And at this point everyone's kind of getting close to dying. Here comes a bunch of these balls. It, but luckily the boss is almost dead so we just powered him down. I go in to try to drop off the ball in the vortex there. And again, it's, it wasn't perfect, but it was done. I decided to put this chest event in just because it is kind of like a mini boss, I guess, even though no loot drops from it. Basically, it's not like old chest at all. You're going to kill one chest piece, and then the boss, the king's defenses are going to go down, and you can uh, fight the king. Basically, you're just not standing in those glowing squares right there. Other than that, there's really no damage. So you're not, you, you can pretty much just DPS this fight, too. Um, there's really no point to healing, because everything just one-shots you if you get hit by it. And you will see me get hit by one thing. I was, <laughs> I was unsure if I was standing in something or not. There, some of the squares are a little rough. Um, if you want to be super safe or you don't have your graphics up, my graphics are up, so I don't have an excuse. But if you don't play with your graphics up very high, um, stand on normal elevation, I guess you would say. So, like, don't stand on one of the broken squares or where it dips down. Because it can be slightly harder to uh, see. As you can see, there is a little bit of damage. That wolf jumped on me, and that did some damage to me. So you can see right there, like, that white square, you could only see part of the uh, lava color or whatever in there. So that was a little bit rough. And just some some of it is a little bit harder to see. Right there. So that, so that square did not look lit up to me. But it actually was. And I have the brightness turned up. But I could tell a little bit that it was lit up. And I tried to get out of it right before it blew me up. But uh, 
that, that that's kind of what I was saying. Just kind of stay on the normal elevation and you won't have to worry about it. But a good thing is you can just run back at this point. It's not a big deal. Again, this isn't even a real boss. So I'm just going to release Spirit and run back. This will be basically the only time in this video we will actually get to see some of the trash run. Um, this room is where you do the Mana Devour quest and then you go upstairs and retrieve flying books. There's also a portal to the entrance of Karzan on the upstairs of that room I was just in. Everything's kind of swirled and whirled and twirled in here. Upside down torches. And you can just run back to the boss. I just want to make sure this was in here too. Just so everyone knew that you could run back to the boss if you need to. If you die, just make sure at least one person's alive, I'd imagine, and the encounter will continue. Obviously don't stand in any of those swirlies. Bit of a track, but not too bad. And by the time I come back, King's almost dead. <laughs> you would think he would have been dead by now, but no. Um, but the DPS aren't really killing, aren't doing the kill the ad, then fight the boss thing. Some of them are just kind of fighting the boss, which I thought was kind of funny. But it, it really doesn't matter. It's just, it's easy. There's no loot or anything, so. And soon uh, the king will fall, and then we can move on to the last boss, which has the most mechanics out of any boss in here. <clears throat> so, this boss, a lot of mechanics, but not really too bad. I pretty much didn't have to use hardly any mana. So you're going to want to stay somewhat spread out here, and he's going to never stand in front of him, and if he turns at you, you're going to want to uh, not aim that towards the group right there. You just saw him shoot that out. As you can see, a little arrow popped up over that gnome mage's head that's running around the outside. That's going to be a fell beam. And you just do exactly what he does. He kited it on the outside of the room there. Um, those orbs coming off is a debuff that you can dispel. Um, shadow something or other. You can dispel it, and those orbs will come out, and you just kind of have to look out for them. Don't stand in any of these swirlies on the ground. And pretty soon you'll see the boss start casting his portal ability. That's really important to note. Because you got to make sure you get into this portal. And if, if, you, if you do, you'll just turn into this pink bubble. And you'll go aboard a spaceship. And yeah, we're on a spaceship on World of Warcraft. So, <laughs> eventually I'll land here. And now, the, uh, those things are electrifying you. But kind of think Helia here. Whichever way he's facing is the way he's going to shoot that beam. So uh, he was facing to the right a little bit. Now he's kind of facing in the middle shoots down the middle and you can shoot down the left important to know if you get hit by that beam it knocks you backwards and yes it will knock you off the spaceship so you do not want to get hit by the beam even more on this phase and if you do or are susceptible to it you want to be standing straight back so that he just got hit the mage got hit but he just got knocked back more down the ship it's better to do that than to get knocked off i suppose so now at this point there's going to be two orb debuffs because you see the orbs um obviously i cleanse the one and I don't know if I get a chance to cleanse the other one or not before it goes off. But as you can see, he brought the orbs to the back, which is very helpful. See, he tried to knock someone off the edge there. But that's pretty much it on this phase is the, there's the orbs. There's him trying to knock you off the edge. Slash just hit you in general. And then the swirlies again. You see him casting another portal there. And then you're going to run to that real quick. And then you're going to go to another little spaceship area. This time there's going to be a little gauntlet. Uh, just be wary because you kind of need to get to the end of it as soon as you can. It's obviously rough to heal as a paladin while you're moving, but you're going to have to do whatever you can. Uh, you know, just bestow faith and holy shock and you can hand a sacrifice, whatever you need to do, depending on how switchy your tank is. Mine's luckily pretty geared, so... It wasn't too bad for me personally, but I could see that being a problem. So now it's going to basically just be the same fight again. Um, at this point, there's actually going to be three uh, debuffs on. So I should have ran that back a little further there than instead of just letting that go right into the group there. It, there's a good example of getting hit by the green beam. It does not kill you by any means. 
I, I got hit by an orb right afterwards. It did hurt, but it didn't kill me by any means once again. Um, appears to be some ads here. Tank's going to grab those. And as long as you're not standing in anything, I mean, it's just... This fight's pretty easy. You just know the mechanics. That's about it. And pretty soon, it'll go down. And that'll be it. So, uh, thanks for watching, everybody. Thumbs up and sub. And everyone, have a good one.